Hey, uh, please welcome the host of the Fully Charged Show, the death defying, hopefully, Johnny Smith and Robert Llewellyn. scared of your knees then? I was, worried, I was worried for people's knees and feet as we came through, but we, we, did, we managed to do it. Afternoon everyone. Good afternoon everybody. Wow. Thank you for coming. What a weekend. Again. It's been absolutely amazing, isn't it Johnny? It's been absolutely beyond everything ever. ever. Well done you! Thank you. Yeah, well done you. Well done. Well done. I think it's uh, 30 years of, of living with my beautiful wife who was here yesterday and was very sweet and gave me a cuddle and told me I was a fucking idiot and it was all my fault. But 30 years of that, that's what I'm used to in my kitchen. I do beg your pardon if there's children here. But because uh, she's Australian, she can't help it, it's in her genetic makeup. But I'm used to constant, constant criticism. So when people say well done, I feel a bit dizzy and nauseous. I don't know what to do. Yeah, but anyway. It, it has been amazing. I'm really grateful that you've all come along. I'm really proud of the fact that Fully Charged has lasted eight years. Let's hope it does another eight. I'm really grateful to Dan Caesar, who's made this event really, really rock the house. And the team as well. I mean, the whole team that has been working behind the scenes, everyone's been working really hard to make this happen. It has been a really, really special event. I just didn't know what it was going to be like. Well, if, 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 I'd, uh, if I'd been told that um, 20, years ta 20 years ago that, that while I was watching records of Red Dwarf on VHS, that my dad used to record for me because I used to go out drinking. <laughs> and it was always on a Friday, I That's think. Friday, yeah. So I'd come on a Saturday, I'd watch it. That I'd be sitting on stage working with you, I would have just, uh, who used to, you know, as a robot actor, I would have said, no, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you for employing me, basically. No, it's been, uh, it has been, I think it's, I think we can, I, I want another round of applause for Johnny, because I think what Johnny's done is raise the stakes on Fully Charged. Yeah. Way up, he's done an amazing job. I'm so pleased to have you on the show, Johnny. Fantastic. <laughs> you can say that. So, uh, so, uh, It's, just, it's been a bit of a shock for me to have episodes of Fully Charged where there's someone talking who actually knows about cars. It's fantastic. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. <laughs> Is this a bromance, by the way? No, no, no more bromance. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, well, so, well, obviously, uh, this talks apparently about uh, what, uh, what to buy and why. Um, it's a big subject. And so, uh, I was going to say to you, I would like to kick it off by saying, asking you, what do you drive and why? Yeah, so... And, because, and what yeah. have you driven, you know, electric-wise up, up until now? Yeah, so I mean, it, that was, I mean, it made me really worry this, because I'm a person that thinks everyone's lovely and all the cars are lovely and everyone's brilliant, it's all marvellous. So having to make any sort be of YouTuber. choice... That <laughs> should be on YouTube. <laughs> Definitely shouldn't be in politics. But, the, the, you know, I have a Nissan Leaf from the very early times. I was given a, a, a press Nissan Leaf when they first came out and I said, can I buy it? And they went, no. And then about six months later, I said, it's got a dent in the front. Can I buy it? And they said, yes. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so so I, bought, I bought that in uh, 2011, and I've still got it, and it still goes. I use it it's all It's so time. dented. It is got some dents. I, we've got to get it on the show at some point. It looks like it's been living in a ghetto. <laughs> I've washed it. It doesn't look quite as bad, because it is very muddy and dirty. The interior is really like, like a condemned building. It's, it's really unpleasant. <laughs> It's a real But mess. it's testament to, you know, really at the top of the list of what to buy and, and why, the Nissan Leaf does, probably deserves a round of applause for being the, the best selling electric car. By, by a long the, way. One of the game changing cars that, uh, that's affordable. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, well, it didn't get a round of applause, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, you know, what they, what I think that, I mean, I've interviewed Carlos Ghosn and, and when he first suggested that, who's the boss of Renault, and he's an amazing man. I've got to tell you this, because I just, it just blew my mind. I was with a, one of the Japanese people from Nissan 
who was really nice, spoke really good English, and, I, and then I heard him speaking to Carlos going, who is older than me, not much, but a bit, and he could speak, I think it's something like nine languages, he's originally Brazilian, his English is perfect, speaks German, French, Italian, everything, and then he learnt Japanese when he was 61 years old in about three months, and I said to the Japanese man, what's his Japanese like, is it a bit rubbish? He went, no, perfect. <laughs> oh, you imagine being able, I mean, like, for me to learn Japanese now, it's just unbelievable, so he's quite a bright guy, but his commitment to making, to steering a huge company like Nissan and Renault around to start making and um, committing to making, you know, built for, not a conversion, but a one-off thing for uh, some regulation to abide by some California law. They actually started mass producing electric cars on the same production line that they make their diesel and petrol ones. You know, that, that was a huge uh, risk, financial risk, which was, I think is now, only now, starting to pay off, where they're really selling a lot of, uh, you know, Nissan, I don't know how many of the new Nissans they've sold, but it's in the... 40, 50,000 already, haven't they? And, well, and of course they make them in the UK and they make the batteries in the UK. Yeah. So the, you cut out a huge amount, for people who care about this sort of thing, you cut out a huge amount of uh, transportation. Because yeah. you're buying a British car. Yes. Actually. Yeah. In Sunday. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, we, if you get the chance to go around the production line there, it's fascinating to watch. So you'll see a petrol engine going in one car and then an electric drive train going in another. And yeah. With about 10 seconds between them. It's yeah. extraordinary. And the guys who work on the line, when David Cameron went up there, I was up there for some big press thing, and they were actually working on the line behind them. They really, I wish I could do a Geordie accent. But there were four guys that had been chosen specifically to be working behind David Cameron when he was on camera. And I went up to them and I said, go on, just really, as you lean, lean over to put in the seats in, just drop your pants <laughs> so you can move behind them. And they went, well, do it, do it, tip this rubber, we'll do it. <laughs> Did anyone do it? No, I was, I was thinking, oh, come on, loosen your belt. <laughs> but yeah, this sounds fantastic. Well, and also, uh, uh, of course, the amount of leaves that have been sold, which means the first generation leaf, you're, like yeah. your battered one, there are lots of them available second hand. Yes. The questions I was always getting is, I can't afford to buy or commit to a, a new EV, but there's no second hand ones out there. But actually now, 2018, there is. And, and Jonathan from Eco Cars is here today, and he's he's over there he's with his hand in the air. He's standing there, and he delivers he delivers really nice cars all over the country, and it's insane what he does. In fact, he should be he needs help actually. If you know anyone that can you know do some therapy for him because he just drives them ridiculous distances. But it's a really good testament to the vehicle that if you're living somewhere miles away from where Jonathan is, and he drives the car to you and delivers it. It kind of shows that it can be done. Which and is, then stays at your house for two weeks. He does stay there for two weeks, yeah. And he's got his own TV schedule and he doesn't like you messing around with that. He knows what he likes to watch. <laughs> he brings his own towel and flannel. Not that bad. Flannel, so old. Flannel. <laughs> Another flannel. <laughs> yeah, so I was talking, well, obviously the, the Leaf V2.0, as they call it, which is on sale now, there's about two or three, probably yeah, more than that. I think it's more than that here, yeah. yeah. Um, it's an exceptionally reliable car. I think it's been proven. I've always wanted to ask um, owners what they think about it. And it's certainly the first gen one, like you. Reliability, amazing, very yeah. resilient car. Uh, I don't personally like the way it looks, but that's almost come secondary to the fact that it, it, it does what it says it's going to do. Yeah. And it shatters a lot of EV prejudices. It's gone a hell of a long way to yeah. um, making EVs normal. And then there's the, the Zoe, I think, I mean, I do love the Zoe, it's yeah. one of my favourites, because it's so simple and it's so small, and when you've parked a Tesla Model S in Italy, you dream of a Zoe. Because I, <laughs> when I went to Italy, we had a parking space at the Airbnb apartment we'd rented. Yes, we're very middle class, and I had a lot of olive oil in the back. Mm. And, and the, the parking space, you know, they go, yes, the apartment comes to the parking space, oh, brilliant, that's what we were going in the car, and I got there, and I looked at the parking space, you could get a... Cinquecento in easily. You can get a Renault Zoe in a bit tight. And I managed to get the, the Tesla in, but I, this is pre-auto uh, parking. I had to climb over the seats and come out the hatch at the back. It's the only way I could get out. Yeah. And it was hanging off a cliff over the Mediterranean. It was a little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah. Well, that is, the, I suppose, the Model S is a... You've got a Model S, so you can talk about Model S better than me. But um, they're a very big car. Yeah. And although they're, an English they're, they're a brilliant car, I think they're only fit for a certain type of purpose in the UK, personally. Right. Whereas the, the Zoe, the, the, the 40 kilowatt hour Zoe, yeah. 
does a huge amount. I think the uh, the basic Zoe is the cheapest electric car. It is. Yes, to buy new. Yeah. In, in yeah. This yeah. Country. Does anyone own a Zoe? How many Zoe owners here? One, two, three. Four. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a few. A few. And, uh, and 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 is that a uh, current Zoe or a first generation Zoe? First gen Zoe. First gen Zoe. New Zoe. Okay. Fine. I mean, if you, uh, the thing is, in, if we ask the same question in France, obviously we'd have to ask it in French. There'd be a lot of hand. They're really common there. They've sold a hell of a lot of them. In, uh, very popular. Oh, I think it's a cool. It's a cool uh, design of car. Yeah. In yeah. terms of the, the the cabin, especially. Yeah, it's very nice. Very pleasant. I three. I mean, I'm just going through I3, the cars yeah. I've driven. Oh, you know, I I three BMW. Favorite interior. Yeah. Get a real spaceship of a car. Yeah. I, I can't imagine BMW actually make money from selling it. No. They won't not, no. officially answer that. Um, I don't think they can make money from it because it's way more expensive looking than it costs. Yes, yeah. It's carbon fiber, it's race car technology, you know, suicide back doors, no B pillar, mad, beautiful sort of floating interior. Yeah. Any, anytime I borrow one of those cars, everyone wants to know about it, more so than far expensive, more yeah. expensive cars. Yeah. I still think it's fantastic. You can order it with them. You've got one, haven't you? Dan's got one, yeah. And do you love it? He loves it. Yes, he's speechless. He's BMW just flicks a switch. It, it is a great car. It's a yeah. fantastic drive, but I am going to get a Leaf next. Oh, are you? Yeah, oh, right. there we go. Ah, yeah. ah. There you go. Going to get a Leaf next. What do you why? Yeah, why? Yeah, why? 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 Yeah. Come on. Uh, bigger boots. Ah, uh, bigger oh, boots. Oh, oh, got, not just for that reason, but you know that's, that's one you, of the reasons. You, you've got two children, two small children. Yeah, and they insist, insist on going on the boot. I'd like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, it's, they're growing. It's like the seventies all over again, isn't it? I love it. I used to go to primary school in the boot of a car, which sounds like I was kidnapped regularly, but I wasn't. <laughs> it's the best. I loved it. I went in the boot of my dad's Vauxhall Victor. It was one of the most fun rides I've ever had. Yeah. Completely in the dark. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> Happy times. Yeah. Pre Euro NCAT. Um, sorry, let's you know we mustn't go off ten, off topic. Um, no, no, we mustn't. I mean, uh, uh, the one that it has made the biggest impression on me very recently is the iPace. So I mean, and it's in a completely different league, and it is a very expensive car, and it is yeah. a sort of premium brand. But as a car, I, I think it's one of the most. And I'm really, you're really good at describing a driving experience and. Uh, you know, I, I just had a driving experience, I didn't really know how to drive it, but it was such a pleasant car to drive, it was such a pleasure. I, you know, with a, 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 as the vicar of Wibbly, Wibbly wobbling all over tracks, I felt very much in control of that car, as long as I wasn't doing 110 round a corner on a... Well, I think we're at a really track. interesting point of, um, of, I said in a previous chat, uh, of convergence, where Tesla have, 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 have thrown the ball a long way away yeah. and asked everyone to go and fetch it. Their technology is fantastic. Their interiors, to me, being Captain Critical, are okay. They're a very young company. Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen Group, these guys have been building cars for like a hundred years, yeah, yeah. some of them. So of course they're better at putting together a car. But the Tesla technology is, 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 has made them run, and yeah. they've had to run. And now we're at a really exciting point where Jag have come out with the I-Pace, which goes on sale imminently. And then you've got Mercedes-Benz with the EQ range. And then you've got the Volkswagen ID range that come, starts next year. It's really exciting yeah. because you've got the mainstream guys finally, like you know, picking up their trousers. Yeah. And um, and Tesla are, are, are trying to work out how to mass produce a car successfully. Yeah. With the you know, and they're victims of their own success in some ways with the Model Three not being able to get it to market quickly enough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the I Pace is is a car is an engaging electric car and a lot of critics of electric cars like some of my peers and motoring journalists who might not be ev fans have said yeah but like, how interesting can a quiet car be and it's heavy because it has to be heavy because yeah. of the batteries so it can't go around corners very well it's like actually it can yeah and now we're seeing that the ability to engineer you know excitement yeah into electric cars and it is, I think, one of the things that I'm sure you've been aware of here, it's been discussed many times, and it's, it's becoming more and more apparent, is that the demand for electric cars is not what's holding back the, the mass adoption of electric cars, it's the supply. You know, that all the manufacturers say that. And I spoke to the, uh, the boss, the UK boss of Hyundai the other day, and he said, look, we're a, we're a capitalist company that wants to make money, and we've got this enormous demand 
for cars and we haven't made them. We want, to, you know, and that, that gap is brilliant for us. It's not very good for consumers, but it's brilliant for us because we really want to fill that gap. You know, because yeah. there's a long waiting list for the Ionic. I know there's some, I've met some people here who drive them. They're, you know, I think that's what, that is, again, one of the... The Ionic's a great Fantastic car. car and you get in, obviously yeah. you get in three flavours. Yes. So the, the, the uh, Hyundai have come in quite late to the, the plug-in game, yeah. but, but just but very seriously. Just thrown three really good versions of the same yeah. car out there. So what we're not doing is slagging off one car and saying this one's better. Okay, do you want to slag one off? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to slag off an I've electric car now in the most cruel way. Okay. The G Wiz. <laughs> oh, does anybody own a G Wiz? Has anyone still got a G Wiz? Come on, someone put your hand up who's got a G Wiz. They Come must on. be <laughs> Jonathan? No, definitely not. Okay. Right. What I'll say about the G Wiz, I looked quite recently, you can buy one second hand for 900 yeah. quid. Yeah, they're, they're cheap if you want a G Wiz. And, really I've, cheap. and I've said to you for a future episode oh, of Fully Charged, I want a hot rod one, really violent. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you buy one on the road for a second one where, the, where the, the wheels are sort of slightly sloping out, really wide sort of wheels. It just looks like a. You could make one go really fast. It just looks like a sort of communist toaster. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> It's what people think of electric cars who just want to be sort of needlessly prejudiced against yeah, electric yeah. cars. And we all know that they are a bit mad. Because I actually filmed one for, I can't remember who it was, I think it might have been ITV or whatever, a proper telly programme. And we, it was in a car park in um, Shoreditch because it was showing how hipster and cool it was. Oh, gosh. And it was in a little rough car park that was just sort of, um, you know, a gravel car park. And I, they said, can you move it forward? Because there was graffiti on a wall and they wanted to get a shot of it with the graffiti. So I got Oh, they wanted it to look street. They wanted it to look street and hip. <laughs> and I drove it forward a bit and it just stopped. And I looked and I thought, it's a handbrake. Like, no, what's it? I don't know. And it was rocking like that. And I got out and looked and there was a pebble that honestly a child could <laughs> cycle over. Yeah, it was a bit of rock about that big. And it just went, boom. Couldn't get it to go. <laughs> so I had to knock it out the way, then I could move it. And so they're not. We, so we will buy a fully charged pool car G Wiz. <laughs> we will we change can, it. We'll let Mark Ink Sharkman, you know, he's desperate for an electric car. He's there fine, is. He's there. You, can get, you can have a G Wiz. The company will buy it for you. 900 quid. Yeah. Or vinyl wrap it. Put some, vinyl wrap it. Put some chrome spinners on it. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, Actually, they you are, could film out the back. You could film out the back of it. It's good. Yeah, you could turn one into a pickup, like a film pickup. <laughs> Actually, for indoor, it might be yeah, quite good. Yeah, yeah, there we go. But, no, we're not. We jazzed, but um, Volkswagen. Obviously, you've got the Volkswagen e-Golf, um, yeah. which is your driving at the moment. Yeah, and it's reassuringly normal. Is what I would say about yeah. that. If you've ever driven a Golf, you know a Golf is a pretty good all-round car. It's a benchmark for lots of people of like what is a classless, mid-size, good all-round hatchback. Yeah. And it, that's what it is. The real world mileage is 125 miles on one charge. Right. They say it's 186, it's not. But I don't know, unless yeah. you live at the top of a hill in San Francisco and you never go the other way. It's literally, it's 35 kilometers an hour in Holland on a very still yeah. day, yeah. no wind or rain. Yeah. And you could probably do it, yeah. Yeah, however, it is really good. It's a good driver's car. Um, it's probably a better driver's car than an Ionic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the thing about choosing an electric car, and I always say this to people, is you can watch a review and you can read all the stats, but what we say about cars and what other people say about cars might not translate to what you want, because it depends what you do in your car. How many miles do you do a year? Where do you live in the country? What's the climate like? Uh, have you got children? Are you a two-car family? There's loads of questions yeah. that you have to, I think, answer and then digest your choice down. Because if I think the e-golf's better than the Ionic, that's me. No, I don't know anything. <laughs> well, don't trouble, ask him. Yeah, the trouble is I know even less. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, is if, you, if you're choosing a car, you must try before you buy. I know so many people that tick an order box and buy a brand new car based upon just a little bit of information on the yeah. internet. And yeah. it's frightening. It's terrifying, yeah. It's frightening. And it is also the thing, I mean, that's one thing we really hope to be able to do here next year. And there's no promises, but, you know, is that there is this thing called the Stow Circuit out there, which is a, a, a small... Uh, you know, it can be a racing circuit, but you, it would be brilliant if we could have had test drives and we just couldn't get it organised it this year. That, that we actually have cars that people can come along and have a go in, which would be really. But people have turned up to fully charged live, which means hopefully we can do another one yeah. and we can evolve it. Because yeah. you've got to start somewhere. Because that's the other thing I actually got when you were mentioning VW, that if, if we're here next year, we might have you know four, five, maybe even more new cars that have just come out. Because I think. 
a few um, big car companies have discreetly had a look round what we're doing here, and they've gone, yeah, all right, we'll come next year. <laughs> well, and, and actually, yeah, and, and that's the thing. To your credit, you're very modest about all of this stuff, and I've tried to sort of point manufacturers who I've had relationships with for years, yeah. you know, with other work, to say, look, you know, you've got a huge audience of fully charged. In a way, you're preaching to the converted for uh, EVs. There's some, some people out here who's on their, like, second electric car. Yeah. Some people are on their third electric car. Yeah, you know, there's people that they, they know about life with electric cars. Yeah. They just want to know what they're going to get next. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense for manufacturers to take those. Because the biggest hurdle is obviously convincing people to try it in the first place. Yes, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Teslas. Obviously, you can buy several Teslas in the UK. X's, X's, S's, S's, and, and they're. What do you think? You own one. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it, it is the one that set the it set the bar, didn't it? it? Set the bar very high for for all the other manufacturers, and they're all very aware of it. It's one of the stories I love. Every time I ever get the chance to talk to the engineering department rather than the PR department of a big car company. I, just, I always ask the same question. What happened? I said, "What did you do when the, te when the Tesla was commercially available in the UK?" So we bought one, tore it to bits, yeah. and they all did it. And Reverse they, engineer. And they actually do put it up on a wall. They take take it to every single individual component. They stick it up on a wall and they look at it and they work out how they did it. Because because quite often, particularly in the case of JLR, there's quite a lot of Jaguar engineers left Jaguar, went to Tesla, worked there, so they actually knew them personally. But one or two of them have actually now come back and they now work at JLR, which is. Fascinating, you know, so there's that, that stuff's going on behind the scenes as well. But I mean, it's, it is, um, you know, I, I love it. I love the Tesla it, in every way, except it's just too big. I don't need a car that big. So I feel like, an, I feel embarrassed that I'm a, a you know, middle-aged old git in a massive car that I don't need a big car. I feel embarrassed. You, 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 you're hopefully going to try a Model 3, maybe. It's try a Model 3. That's, that's the yeah. European shape. Yeah. Size. It is a little bit smaller. I have to admit that when I was at the LA Motor Show looking at the Jaguar I-Pace, I was trying to get a shot of it on my phone and I walked backwards, my legs bumped into a car and I went, oh God, because that was the Tesla stand. I went, oh God, Model S, not interested. It's got one, seen it, taking pictures of that. And it was only when I was in a, in a taxi on the way to the airport that I looked at something on Twitter and I realized what I'd bumped into was a Model 3. And I hadn't even looked at it, I didn't know. The front is very similar. <laughs> You I, don't know, I don't know what to say. You would have known. I didn't know. So I was leaning. Ah. Have you? What do you reckon? And there's, uh, yes. Right. What do you reckon? What, what? What What do you think? Did you like it? It's an amazing car. Yes? It's, yeah. Uh, I went to New York and they have, I think, only one in New York in the Tesla store. It was, I immediately sent pictures to my friend. Uh, it's difficult to describe. It's a beautiful car. Yeah. It's very lean, very it, simple. It's a simple car, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. But it, yes. it, it, there's it, only one screen and I think just one button. That's yeah. like nothing else. It's like a first generation mm. iPod. It is. And yeah. I still think that they're really good. Yeah. I, I was in the gym the other day and I'm with my first generation iPod and a bloke just went, nobody uses them anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Really cool people. Really. Bloody do actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 13 or something years old and it, it still, still works. works. Nothing so, to go wrong really, is it? Go mm. away. I said go away. <laughs> Using other words. <laughs> but Which no, is not relevant. I mean, the, what I'm hoping thing. is we, we probably won't be able to get a left hand, a right hand drive uh, Model 3 right, for a yeah. job, but we might be able to flag one out from, from the Netherlands, or a left hand drive, because it would be great to have one here. Yeah. There, um, there was a, 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 probably something, sort of a video recently of the guys that did, what did they, over 600 miles on one charge. In a model it's the same thing we're saying about, and they did it in, I don't know where it was, some of you might know, Denmark or the Netherlands, but they did it by driving at 35 miles around an hour around a track for like 22 hours. You know? But they did do six, so you can, you can, you can say, you can do 600 miles on one charge, yeah. but as long as it's flat and you're going around in a circle. <laughs> Mercedes Benz of, uh, obviously owns Smart. Smart, uh, smart yeah. there is an electric Smart called the. Um, the or 2ED, but it's just been, its name has just been changed. Ah. Because Mercedes have just rebranded their electric range called the EQ range. So it's now called, I think, the Smart EQ, the Smart EQ. And the Smart is a, a really, really good car in its own right. People laugh at it because of its small proportions, but actually it's a, fun, it's a really safe car. I've crashed three of them. Right. It, <laughs> intentionally, for uh, TV work, and they are phenomenally safe. Wow. Phenomenally. You safe. actually crashed them Yeah, I've rolled one and it was Yeah, it was amazing. 
and and people go because oh, they they assume that small means unsafe. Yeah. And this and and, are, and we now know because of Euro eight cap and stuff, small doesn't mean unsafe. But yeah. the thing about the the smart um, EQ thing is that I, I didn't realise that I forgot that electric smarts and, uh, have been going now for eleven years. Wow. Wow. They're in their fourth generation of electric yeah. smart. Yeah. Does anybody care? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of that. Oh really? Wow. Brilliant. I see. I think if you genuinely know that you don't need to carry more than two people, and yeah. most people commute to work on their own. Yeah. Yeah. I've I don't constantly... even have any friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just think the smart's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. It's much more versatile than people realise. And it's people. A lot of people with smarts, they don't even want to get in it and, and, and think about it, so they dismiss it very early on in yeah. the buying process. The same probably with a Twizy. Does anyone own a Twizy? Who's got a Twizzy? Uh, Jonathan owns Jonathan, a Twizzy. Of course. He owns a Twizzy. Jonathan's just driven to the other side of Mongolia and back in his. <laughs> just for the He for genuinely the has driven it a long way. <laughs> yeah, a very long way. Yeah. Again, it's quite an old EV, I suppose, now. Yeah. But fair play to Renault, it's a really radical idea. It's basically a bubble car. It is. Amazing. An electric yeah. bubble car. I've got, because I still, I still haven't driven a Twizzy where I felt normal and stopped laughing. So I've always laughed whenever I've driven one. Because particularly, I picked my daughter up from school when she was still at school in the Twizzy, and she was so appalled that she put her, her my uh, raincoat on her face. She put the hood <laughs> over her face so none of her mates would see her. That's what, as I was driving, oh, yeah, she's going, oh God, why have you come in this? And I was driving out, and all the kids were waving. And then the next day, I got a text while she was still at school. She said, can you come in that damn car again? Everyone wants to see it. There so that go. time, took it in the playground and the teachers were there, they all loved it. They were all well, like it. See, that's the other thing about buying an electric car, or any kind of car, it's sometimes you're not just buying it because it's um, useful and it ticks the boxes of what you do in your car on a day-to-day -day basis. But if it has an emotional connection, because it's like a character. Yeah, well oh, that so really is like a character. It's like a little... It's like a character that is a 1970s bathroom fitting, but it is like a character. <laughs> I, uh, I, my parents have still got an avocado sweet. Oh. You oh. can't beat an avocado sweet. Love an avocado. I love avocado sweets. <laughs> Dude. I'm not normal. The other one that I'm hoping I'm sure we won't manage it, but that we might be able to have at the show next year is the uh, Porsche Mission E. So I've had a little sneak at the look. We haven't yeah. been in one yet, but that's... It's just that's changed its name 24 hours oh, ago. That's right, it has. What's it called? The Taycan. The Taycan. Taycan. It's true, guys. It's not called a Mission E anymore. It's called a Taycan. I'm just ta Taken, like um, that film with, be Liam with, Neeson, with Liam Neeson. But it's spelled differently. The Taycan. I'm just going to go and get the Chinese what about takeaway or the Taycan. But yeah, I've up and take and take them. <laughs> no one owns one yet, so we'll cross that bridge yeah, when we okay. come to it. But yeah, the mission, that's exciting. Well, it would be interesting because of the, the charging. The, the, you know, that's the first car that's kind of got the potential for 350 kilowatt charging. What does that really mean? Yeah. How long does that really take? All those sort of things. But they're, they're very excited, the Porsche people. Well, well it's going to have they're proper, they're proper they're power. They're yeah. Um, it's going to be well built. Uh, it's Porsche. They always are well built. Um, and it's going to pave the way for other Porsche models. Yeah. So, and the whole Volkswagen Audi range with, yeah. with, with Porsche in that family. The ID range, I'm sure we're all quite excited about the ID buzz. Yeah. Uh, which is not going to be the first ID beat Volkswagen, but the, the, the buzz. Yeah. I do like a retro, futuristic yeah, EV. Amazing thing, the nice. Honda. On the yeah, yeah, eBay. So I've probably had about 800 people want to talk to me about that this weekend yeah. because it is one of those cars. It's like a, Honda are late to the game of full EV. Honda have already been a really innovative company that take risks and it hasn't always panned out. For goodness sake, just build that urban yeah. EV. Well, it's they have that they're going to. Aren't they, they have. It's just I hope that they don't yeah. dilute it. I yeah. hope it stays exactly as we see it. Yeah. So, you know, within 10%. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We don't actually know the answer to that, by the way. There's no punchline yeah. to that. No. <laughs> We just don't know. So we just, yeah, we can do so. We're all right. We don't, we're just. Are you all right? I mean, could we, could, if you want to ask some questions, we may. Does anyone want to answer any, uh, answer any questions? Ask well, any if you questions. want to answer any questions, <laughs> Does want to answer questions? <laughs> you can answer a question. <laughs> Actually, I didn't want to ask any questions. I wanted to bring up a couple of things that you've mentioned throughout the show. Congratulations as well on the show. It's been great fun. Uh, firstly, gang signs are fully charged. Oh, very good. It's well, that, that could be misconstrued. If you, if you've got to be careful. Yeah, I love seeing Robert do gang signs. Is anybody else? <laughs> it's close. It'll be misconstrued. That's massively misconstrued to me. But anyway, 
and, and also Spark Heat Challenge. Smart yeah. Heat Challenge. Spark Heat. Spark Heat. Yeah. It should, it, it, oh, it would be a, good. It's a mashup that could work, isn't it? Scrap Heat Challenge and Spark Heat Challenge. I really like yeah. that idea when you brought it up. Yeah. But no, I don't have any questions. Other people in the auditorium have answered everything I need to know. So thanks, thanks very much for the well, great stuff. Thank you. Anyone else uh, questions? There's, uh, there's a, a gentleman there. First of all, I want to thank both of you for being here. I'm delighted to, to have you here. I love both of you and watch all the time, and the Patreon supporter and all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. All right. We had to come. <laughs> I reckon you're right. Uh, about the, the, the upcoming Volkswagen ID, I believe it's rear wheel drive only. What, what thoughts do you have about that, Johnny? Well, it's really good for me because. Um, You'd assume it was going to be front wheel drive like a Golf because it's going to replace the e-Golf. The e-Golf is just like your sort of stepping stone between, the, you know, a car designed for pistons that's been converted. But I think it's going to be exciting because I think, and they, they won't, they refuse to answer it, I think they'll put a beetle body shell on it at some point and build what should be the, you know, the, the beautiful, in my eyes, the best car that ever lived, the Volkswagen Beetle. Controversial. Um, hit the connections, we won't go there. But, um, It'll be great because it'll be a driver's car, won't it? It'll be a really good driver's car and also, you know, the whole flat floor thing, good, good boot space, neat packaging. Yeah, why not? I mean, in fact, if it's, if it's, if it's rear wheel drive and it drives really well, I almost don't care what it looks like. Yeah. Snow, winter tyres, <laughs> chains, sandbags. Actually, the, 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 the best electric car I've ever driven in the snow was the Mitsubishi iMe. Oh, yeah, rear wheel drive. Uh, yeah. So sort of narrow tyres, little city car built for a Japanese city. I drove it through really deep snow in the Cotswolds. But admittedly, I followed Jim, who was driving a Land Rover, who's a local farmer, and he was going to the shop and I was going straight on, except I didn't. So when he made two furrows in the snow <laughs> down to the shop, that's the way I went. I didn't do any steering. It was the most extraordinary thing. I was straight ahead. I'm going, what's going to happen? It's going to get stuck. I've got my boots on. I can walk home if it gets stuck. And I went like that. And then, oh! <laughs> Scared but it, did, it, it moved. It moved in the snow, and it, and it was sliding about a bit. But it was. It got through it. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Man on his knees. Hello. Um, I bought an i3 two, three years ago for one reason, and that was the range extender. And um, it was my only car, so I couldn't quite where I live go for an all electric. I'm interested that nobody else here makes that model of what is essentially a battery car with just a little bit of petrol for when you need it. The outboard motor, as I call it, yeah. get stuck. Do you think there's a future in that, or do you think battery ranges have got big enough, or why doesn't anyone else do it? Yes, I think, I mean, I'm, I've always been intrigued by that because I thought it was such a clever idea to put a small, effectively a motorbike. It's a, it's a motorcycle engine, yeah. 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 And it just seems like, a, you know, rather than a, you know, like the Ampera, um, which yeah. I know, you, and I think it's, which is a great car, but that has got a big lump of a, Traditional car yeah, engine in it, yeah, that, you're, that most of the time you're just dragging around. Whereas the sort of motorbike engine is kind of discreet it, it, and tucked away. It does make it make a lot of sense. I, should, I suspect that, that the, um, the technology is such that people will just say you're either going to go for thrifty diesel or petrol, or just go for EV for BMW at least. Um, and then obviously you've got the i8, which is effectively kind of supercar. Yeah. Performance with a tiny little engine. engine. Yeah, the sound but really, engine. yeah, and like, what's great about that car is so many EV doubters in the industry uh, just accepted it straight away because yeah. a it looks amazing, b it's made of fantastic materials, and c it goes like a sting. Yeah. So you just go, I actually don't care what. Yeah, it's, it's I don't care whether it's propelled by which is nasal hair. It's brilliant. <laughs> The trouble is, as soon as you said that, I, I saw the cover of a, of a Faraday Past <laughs> album from don't, 1973. Don't, don't, we're not going there. Don't, don't. Um, Please don't. But I also think that it probably is to do with the fact that the battery technology is going to jump ahead and in, in effectively mm. it's kind of, it will be unnecessary. And I mean, it's, I've, I've heard from varying people who've... Who, uh, one guy I, met, I remember talking to, a, a charger, who bought a range extender uh, uh, i3 and he then traded it in for a pure electric one when he realised how rarely he used the petrol. But I know yeah. for a fact that, I mean, uh, uh, um, you, you, I mean, you use it quite a lot, don't you, Dan? I mean, you do occasionally use the... You use it's some your backup. Petrol. It's your, it's I don't your, use the battery. Just for sure. Yeah, just just he never charges it. He just got rings it up. Got the in it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets one and a half miles to the gallon. It's brilliant. Amazing. It's the effect's amazing. <laughs> but it is the, it's your sort of like safety net, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. But you know, it's like me sometimes with my car, if I'm doing, if I can't be bothered to charge it, and I know my car doesn't have the range of yours, but um, I just kind of know it's there. Yeah. So it is a nice yeah. feeling. Yeah. If you're a lazy EV owner. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't, you don't want to be too organized with regards to public charging. Yeah, yeah. It has its place. And to that end, actually, second-hand box lamp hairs, Jonathan will know this. You can pick a good one up now for like eight grand, which really I think is an exceptional car. car. Yeah, it was car right. of the year in 2012. There you go. <coughs> it's a bloody good car. Is a question here. Yeah. Are you from the fun-loving criminals? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. No, no, I'm not. Uh, speaking of Tesla and you know exciting cars, um, what I wanted to know what your thoughts are on the new Tesla Roadster coming up hopefully soon. I mean, not that soon, but uh, Elon tweeted yesterday, I think, that it's going to have a SpaceX option with cold gas thrusters that will help acceleration, braking, and whatever. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I wonder if he's started self-medicating. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the only thing I've heard about it, so there's an amazing guy called Ben Sullen, so I'm sure many of you know he does a, a, a channel called Te Teslanomics. Am I getting it right here? So I always get those confused. Not Tesla, it's Teslanomics. And he ha he's, has a, you know, he's driven every Tesla in the world and he knows all about everything about them. And when he had a ride in the, in the Roadster, and I said, is it really, I, I had a long conversation with him, and he said, is it, I said, is it really as fast as they say? And he went, it's just, he, he said, I'm used to, to a, a 100D ludicrous. I'm used to it, it's normal for me. This thing terrified the living, he actually used some very bad language, which is like he would never use on that. But he, he said it really is, it's a sub two second 0 to 60, which you cannot believe you're experiencing when you're doing it. So well, that's lunacy, it is lunacy. It's absolutely yeah. laughing mad. Yeah, I think it's exciting yeah. to answer your question. And I'm, but also, I'm equally excited about the Tesla truck. Yeah. Not because I'm gonna buy one, but because that is going to be a very interesting thing Big rigs being yeah. full EV or hydrogen. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they use a huge amount of diesel power. So to make one realistically EV only is going to be very exciting. And that, the more yeah. people are going to more likely to drive the, the truck than they are the roadster. I mean, I don't know how much money the roadster is going to be, but what a hell of a car. And also, again, it sets the benchmark. He's thrown the ball out and he said to the other manufacturers, come on then, what are you going to do? And that's exciting for us because we're going to see this stuff actually come to market. We do one, one more, one more, and then give away some money. Oh yes, we're going to give away some give money. Away some oh, yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'd love to say well done on doing this show. I'm Thank sure you. everyone here echoes what I'm thinking. It's been fantastic, and Thank uh, we all. Will... Thank you very much. Amazing, so. <laughs> Uh, as a question, it's more really just for how people accept what, what's going on with EVs. Um, the EV Experience Centre in Milton Keynes, they've done a fantastic job. I'm, Amazing, yeah. now. I'm lucky enough to live there, so that's, that's great having that on my doorstep. What I'd like to ask is, what do you think dealerships need to do in changing their mentality on how they... Uh, yeah, I can see that on your face. How, how they push forward EVs and, and, and how, you know, where, where they go from there. Yeah, I mean, I think it is... For the big manufacturers and the big, it is the, the, their main stumbling block. I think. And I, I think it was late last year I went to a Renault dealership conference. So it was all the dealers for Renault dealers all around the country, and they asked me to speak about the positive aspects of EVs at this event. And and I and I've done a lot of gigs, and a lot of gigs. You when you see a crowd that are loving it, you're, the face of the person that's not enjoying it will always stand out. You know, particularly if you're talking in schools. I've done a lot of that in schools, and there's. 26 kids in the sixth form doing engineering, all really enthusiastic, and there's one goth kid in the back. <laughs> Doesn't want to know. And you can never win them over. Well, at this event, I was introduced onto the stage, and there was about five people asleep when I went on. They were, <laughs> no matter what I did, they were still asleep when I left 20 minutes later. So. But it's a huge challenge because the difference in their sales figures they, they announced. So in one dealership, I think it's outside Edinburgh, that the, the Renault. Zoe, they'd sold hundreds of Renault Zoe's, not one or two, hundreds. And another dealership somewhere near like Rislip or Twickenham or somewhere had never sold one, never had one in stock. And the guy wasn't interested, he thought they were rubbish. So you've got a real problem. It's very much down to the dealers because I've had so much anecdotal evidence come back, including my sister who had to go in a, a, a Volkswagen E-Up. When, when that first came out, I had it at home and she was visiting and she had a 
And she drove around in it and came back and went, that's the one I want. That's exactly what I want. It does exactly what I want. It's perfect. And the husband went, yeah, all right, we're going to get in the up. They went to a big VW dealership and the guy just said, oh, you don't want that. They're not reliable. You want the diesel. What? You know, and that is a VW dealer that told her. I, you know, just, and I, I, think, I think two things with that. First thing is, you have to try before you buy. And that is the, that, that is the absolute most important way to, to let someone decide whether they want an electric car. They have to taste it for themselves. And they have to do it for a minimum of 24 hours. So some dealers will say, try an electric car, here it is. Take it away for the weekend or take yeah, it away for the EV experience centre. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so they should be throwing the keys at people. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, and secondly, they should have someone in every dealership who actually gives a toss yeah. about electric cars and has done their homework. It's because <laughs> if you haven't done your homework, how can you tell people? Yeah. Because there's, there's a, a, a Nissan dealership in Oxford where I've taken my car to be serviced, and their guy that does the Nissan stuff, the, the Nissan EVs, does, does the Leaf, drives one. Every, it's his car. He's absolutely passionate about it. He knows about it. He understands it. He can answer all the questions. He explains how they use They've sold truckloads, you know, so they do really, so it's really down to having one of them. And that's, they're desperate to do that, I think. That, they, I, I went into a mobile the, phone shop recently, which I do every two years. Because I'm not really massively into phones. I don't queue around the block for the new phone. I'd, I'd rather just go to sleep that night. But the guy in the shop was so full of energy and enthusiasm for phones. And he knew that I was just sort of passive with it. But he knew everything about every phone. Right. And he told me the pros and cons about every phone. And I just said to him, look, it, my phone needs to do this and needs to do that. I, I, you know, I don't want to live and breathe it. I'm not on forums. Yeah. Phones don't if they exist. Um, and, but... That's what you need. That's what you need in a, in a dealership. And, and probably, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about this, probably someone younger with maybe less prejudice. Yeah. You know, because a lot of younger people uh, like technology more than we probably did when we were younger. Yes. I might be wrong, but yeah. it's cooler to like technology than it used to be. It used to be a little bit open university. Didn't it? <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I may have worn some cardigans at the time. <laughs> And some you should side totally do an open university spoof on that check. Some sideways iron flares, sandals with socks. I mean, it's comfortable. It's very <laughs> uh, where do we go from there? Let uh, me look at my list. We've got to do, uh, we've got to do the, the raffle. Oh, yeah, we should do the raffle. Otherwise, yeah. we'll, go yeah. all, we'll all be here all day. Yes. Everyone has pins and needles. Which is lovely because my energy, the, um, the trade stand behind you guys there, um, where, where there's a box being held up by Jordan. Come on, Jordan. My energy, uh, uh, they they they've, they've done a raffle where you can win a thousand pounds. Someone is going to win a thousand pounds now. Give, yeah. give Jordan a big round of applause for my energy. I like the fact it's a physical oh, raffle. So much stuff's virtual now. There's this, wheels screwed up pieces of just, paper. I, I really hope whoever's got this, get your tickets out if you've got them. Get your tickets out, ladies and gentlemen. But it was so fantastic there when we, did, we drew it yesterday. The guy's face when he won. He, he went, oh, also, it was really good that the person that won was really in the crowd. He was in the crowd. Nothing worse than it's like, Mrs. Mrs. Biggins I from... Know. And they go, oh, she's gone home. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so let's hope you're here. <laughs> so has each person got one ticket now? Is that, I see. Oh, I see. Okay, check. There's a database. Have you have you uh, fulfilled it with GDPR? Oh, we love raffles. <laughs> we do this every week. Yeah, every week. week. The number is three five one. Three five one. We're going to get now the database. They're, they're hacking through the database. Three they've, five one. I've said they've got to dial up to the Russian servers. Oh my God! Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. It's a real guy. Richard. It's a real person. This, this is Richard, ladies and gentlemen. He's a thousand pounds richer. I hate Richard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well that is amazing. No, I want Richard to stay up on stage. Yeah, I want Richard to be publicly humiliated. Because <laughs> much and I think we should, I mean, really, thanks to my energy, this is such a brilliant thing that you did. I think it's, I think it's insane. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do some talking.
<laughs> well, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, thank you for everyone that popped by the stand and all the support from you guys. It's been believable. Great small, stuff. small English manufacturer. You've done us wonders. So great thank stuff. You. Thank you. That, well, that's to, to your credit, actually, Robert. You do always champion the sort of startup companies and you know yeah. young innovators, and that is what my energy is. So, well, it works. Anyway, it works. Thank you. Yeah. It's brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Um, I, don't, I think we've done. I if I'd done it, let's yeah. see who would have won. Let's see who would have won. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, nine. One hundred and nineteen. Who would have won? Buddy? Oh, you don't want to know. Don't look at your tickets. It's not, it's, I'll give you a tenner if, somebody, if, if one, one, nine is there. I've got a tenner somewhere. Yeah, I think we can chip in. <laughs> you give him a tenner as well. I know you would. You're good like that. Yeah. So I think we should we should wind it up. I don't even know how to wind it because I don't, all I want to do is say thank you to everybody. And I just it gets boring. I can't keep going on about it. thank you. I do want to quickly mention the, the Tesla Owners Club who did the the, the, the taxi service because that was they just stepped in and did it. They were absolutely brilliant. And as usual, as usual, Tesla gets the limelight. It's also very important to mention the Renault Zoe Owners Club, who also moved loads of people. <laughs> and I'm not forgetting, basically my favourite vehicle here, the Big Lemon Bus Company, who also did a lot of, a lot oh, yeah. of uh, transportation, which is fantastic. I'm really good of them to come along. Fantastic. So I think, uh, I think all that, really all that's left to say is, if you have been, thank you for watching. Yeah.